Madame de Montespan. Probably, maybe you don't know her, but if you know Louis XIV, you know, I didn't write Louis XIV, the Sun King, Le Roi Soleil. Probably you know who was the Louis XIV, the most glorious king we had in France, that during the golden age of uh, France, which is the 17th century, when people all over Europe had to speak French and not English. So Madame de Montespan was the favorite of the Sun King. Louis XIV had many lovers, uh, but um, he didn't have many favorites. Favorites and favorites, it meaning that as he didn't choose um, his wife, he chose who would be like the queen. I mean, when he was doing the parties, when you had the the old events, it was Madame de Montespan. So you can see she was extremely gorgeous. I don't know if you know Brigitte Bardot, the sexy actress, the French. Yes, I see uh, Kim, she's smiling. Yes, you know Brigitte Bardot. She was, she did look like Brigitte Bardot, if you have to, because in 17th century, um, to be sexy, you had to be blonde, brunette, no way, not nice at all, and to have white skin, because it means you don't work in the fields, you're from our uh, nobility, and blue eyes. And she had something extremely, extremely precious in 17th century, her teeth, you know, because people, the hygiene in 17th century in France was not wonderful. And now, dear ladies, on International Women's Day, a day that marks the celebration of women, the great women. It is my great honor to introduce our amazing speaker, a Parisian native, Edith de Belleville, who was an attorney for many years, but her passion for Paris and his history led her back to university at the age of 50 to get her official tour guide license Deeply inspired by Parisian women of the past, Edith decided to write a book in French entitled The Beautiful Rebels of Paris, Belle et Rebelle. Edith also teaches Jewish history at Paris in the University Gustave Eiffel, Man la Vallée, and has just finished writing a book in English, which will be published in March 2022. So this month, Parisian life adventures in the city of light. She shares Paris culture in a Facebook group, La Vie Parisienne. So without further ado, dear ladies, please welcome our guest speaker, Edith de Belleville. A communal friend, Bernadette Martin, introduced me to Edith and she told us we'd be in for a wonderful treat that Edith is so passionate about what she does and she is very entertaining and charming. So welcome Edith to be here now, ladies lunch. Bonjour, can you hear me? Yes. Oui. Okay, perfect. So thanks for a nice introduction. First time I do meditation through Zoom from Australia. <laughs> Australian accent. It's funny. So first of all, I'm very sorry for my Australian sisters. You know, I've heard what happened in Australia. I'm very sorry. I have a special link with Australia. I did a podcast about influential French women in English with an Australian journalist, Olia, who works on the Radio France Internationale. And it was funny because I'm not used to the Australian accent. And sometimes on the radio, I say, what? What did you say? I don't understand. So, and the, the woman who, who did the picture of myself on my first, the first book, uh, Belle et Rebelle, she was, a, she's also Australian from uh, Sydney, Carla Edwards. So, and one of my favorite uh, movie, Don't Make Fun of Me, is a Babe. You know, the little pig? Yes, that's what, that's a movie. I like Australian movie very much. So, let's try to be funny. I don't, it's early in, in France. Huh? Well, for me, it's early at nine o'clock. So, about my book, why did I write this book? Because I think um, that, um, well, I would say I don't believe in coaching. I, I believe in coaching, but I think the best coaches in life are the people 
who really uh, who really existed you know um you talk about uh, mother teresa joan of arc and this is how i think i think there are models of uh, women and as icons so i decided to write about women parisian women because i chose women who are from paris like me who really helped me you know uh, uh, as i don't do meditation i had to you know to know the life of this woman when i felt i didn't feel very well or or I had friends of mine who did look like the, the five women because I wrote about five women. So, and to tell to the women from all over the world um, why they're so modern, because we think because they're dead, they're not modern, but you will see how they're very modern. So let's start with the first one. You talk about Joan of Arc, and this is a woman who was contemporary about Joan of Arc, but nobody knows, I mean, few people know. C'est Christine de Pizan. Alors, Christine de Pizan, she's from Middle Ages. She was born in uh, Venice, Venezia, in Italy, because her father was Italian, and she died in France. It's funny because yesterday, the French president was in Poissy, which is in the suburb of Paris. And I immediately thought about, not Emmanuel Macron, the president, but me, I immediate, immediately thought about uh, Christine de Pizan who died in a convent. So why is she so important woman? Because first, she's the first feminist, one of the first feminists in the world because she, she said that women have to help each other, but something happened to her. She's coming from the wealthy family. She, she married a, a, a man who was um, not rich, but who did belong to the court of Charles V, so um, an intellectual, and she had children. So she had the normal life of a woman from Middle Ages in Paris, but, something happened awful for her. She became a widow with three children, with a grandmother and with a, a nephew. And of course, I say in, in my book, in Middle Ages, you don't have any you know, help, uh, care. You don't have help from the government. You have nothing. So the way I was really, really um, impressed by how she did succeed because she became the first woman to write and to be paid to write. Before you had women from Middle Ages in Germany who were writing or in England, but Christine, I call her Christine because she's my friend. She's really the first woman who was paid by the, 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 the VIP, the rich and famous to write. So how did she do? She, in fact, she wrote and in the night and she was reading books and the, um, the, the lesson of Christine, because in each chapter, I say one woman has a lesson to tell us, women from the 21st century, is thanks to the book. She found consolation thanks to the books, meaning she was so sad that what she could do, she was reading all the classics, you know, uh, Virgil and uh, Homer and all from uh, the Greek and the, the, the Latin uh, writer. She, she was reading, 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 and suddenly she decided because she was so sad she had her grief was so heavy she decided to write poem so she wrote poetry in the night you know you can see her with the you can imagine her the candle of the light and she was writing poem about a loneliness how she felt depressed and her words were so um easy to read and so authentic that she became successful and something incredible that she published, I mean, you didn't have published, but she wrote the book and she became very famous all over the world. And she, she had such a talent to write a feelings that the kings, um, Charles V and the, the family of Charles V asked her to write about the, the life of the, the king, you know, because she really, she was extremely modern the way she was writing. I put in my book an extract of um, one of her poem. And I say that when I was doing my, my, li my license to be tour guide, I explained in the beginning, I was very depressed because I had the good idea to start when there was the terror attack, you know, in uh, 2015. Not only it was awful in Paris, as you can imagine, but it was a nightmare for tourists and nightmare for the licensed tour guide. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm 50 years old, I have two kids. 
I'm divorced, I don't have money, and now I want to be a tour guide when there are no tourists, you know? And thanks to her, I explained in my book, I was reading your life and I said, okay, I have to stop complaining because in Middle Ages, it was really not funny to be a woman, you know? You could be raped just to go to buy you, your bread. You could be, you know, uh, you didn't choose your husband. So that's, I, I really have a great um, adept uh, for Christine because she saved me, I say, from a not nervous breakdown, but when I saw all the obstacles she had and she did succeed, she became the first Western woman to write to be paid, I said, okay, I stopped complaining, I have to focus on the books. And I had my degree, I'm very proud because I had a very good marks. And believe me, uh, tourism, art history was not my field. And my field is uh, labor law, not uh, the art. So just thanks to her, you know, and something very interesting, so I have to show you other pictures. Yes, yeah, so the book's very famous because I don't have to talk about myself all the time. I'm not very interesting. So the book, very famous, is The City of Ladies. This is, you see, it's an image allegory that she said, we, women, we have to help each other. Even the queen, we have to build our house to protect ourselves, to help each other using the words, you know, so it's a very uh, a poetical and very interesting, if you see the political um, idea of a book, you know. She said, we, we always talk about the men in history, but we forget women. So she decided to write, to see history through the eyes of women from the Bible, from the French history. So it was a hit, a bestseller, even translated uh, in the Flemish, uh, in Dutch. So you can see her with the Isabeau de Bavière. And you see, it's funny, I explained the fashion, you know, in the Middle Ages, you had to have a very white skin and a big uh, forehead because uh, you seemed uh, clever. And what is interesting that I found that you have a, a vase a vase you see in English, a vase, made by Émile Gallet. Alors, Émile Gallet is a famous Art Nouveau, uh, which is an artistical movement from Europe in 19th century. And I discovered that he made a vase, you know, with solet. And solet, it means in um, French from Middle Ages, alone, when you're a woman, inspired by the poem I wrote in my book and I, which inspired me too, you know? So I said, oh, not only women, but Emile Gallet, who is a very famous uh, art uh, artist in Art Nouveau was inspired by, by this poetry. And you can see her, you know, with all ladies in a bedroom uh, talking about, because you had um, a fight about a very famous book, Le Roman de la Rose, uh, between uh, men, uh, French and English, who are extremely chauvinist, not nice at all with women. And she really took, uh, not a pain, but she took, uh, you know, to write. And she wrote a book to say it's an awful book, you know. So she was not only the first feminist to write a book for women, she was the first political journalist. She was a historian. She was really, really, really smart and gifted. But you had the 100 years uh, against English. I'm not going to tell you because uh, we will stay all day about the 100 years war, but just to tell you that she wrote, peace will come thanks to women. She said, we, all, we have always to think, and look what happened now in Ukraine. We have to think about the, the sister of the warriors, the mothers of the soldiers, the, the children, you know? And she wrote, la paix viendra des femmes. Peace will come from women. She wrote this all the times because she was devastated because you have to know in 1418 that Paris was invaded by the, English and Bourguignon, who are the allies of the English. So it was a chaos in Paris. So she went to Poissy in a convent and she cried and she wrote about peace. And suddenly, guess what happened? 8 May 1429, what happened in Orléans, the city? A young French woman, 17 years old, only took English out of France, of Orléans, Joanne of Arc, Jeanne d'Arc. So she was so excited. She said, I knew it, I knew it. I told you peace would come from a woman. For, um, and she even wrote a poem about uh, Joanne of Arc. Uh, funny, it's, uh, she, she was, I really liked her. And she, it thanks to the American woman in the 70s that she became well-known because the French, you ask French people, people don't know her. 
And it thanks to the, always like this, always thanks to an American woman that the French know their history. It's always like this. So Christine de Pizan, it's consolation by the book. Read books, books, and you will see, you will feel in better shape. Alors, the second one, it's 17th century, Madame de Montespan. Probably, maybe you don't know her, but if you know Louis XIV, you know, I didn't write Louis XIV, the Sun King, Le Roi Soleil. Probably you know who was the Louis XIV, the most glorious king we had in France, that during the golden age of uh, France, which is the 17th century, when people all over Europe had to speak French and not English. So Madame de Montespan was the favorite of the Sun King. Louis XIV had many lovers, uh, but um, he didn't have many favorites. Favorites and favorites, it meaning that as he didn't choose um, his wife, he chose who would be like the queen. I mean, when he was doing the parties, when you had the the all events, it was Madame de Montespan. So you can see she was extremely gorgeous. I don't know if you know Brigitte Bardot, the sexy actress, the French. Yes, I see uh, Kim. She's smiling. Yes, you know Brigitte Bardot. She was. She did look like Brigitte Bardot. If you have to, because in 17th century, um, to be sexy, you had to be blonde, brunette, no way, not nice at all, and to have white skin because it means you don't work in the fields. You're from our uh, nobility and blue eyes. And she had something extremely, extremely precious in 17th century, her teeth, you know, because people, the hygiene in 17th century in France was not wonderful. So you can see she was gorgeous, but it say, I say in my book, being beautiful is not enough to seduce. You have to be wit, you have to be smart, you have to know, to have knowledge. This is what I say, because Madame de Montespan, she was extremely smart. She was like an actress, she was funny, she knew how to tell story. This is how she seduced the king. And she had uh, many children with the king, uh, few died, um, and she had to find the nanny to take care of the kids. And guess what happened? I don't know if you can speak or not with that. No, everybody is mute. It's only me who can speak. So what happened with the nanny? Do you know uh, Schwarzenegger, the government of uh, California? Or Jude Law, the British? Or Ethan Oak, you know, with Uma Thurman? What, what do they have in common, the three men? Schwarzenegger, Ethan Oak, and Jude Law. Do you, you don't know the gossip? You don't know the and nobody guessed on the they chat. They all had lovers. They all had <laughs> affairs with their with their nannies. Yes. Who say this? Who say Me? this? <laughs> yes, yes absolutely. They had an affair with the nanny. So what happened? Madame de Montespan, she took another woman, Madame de Maintenon, who was more quiet than her, brunette, but more quiet, very, you know, discreet. And what happened? The king fell in love with the nanny, but he did better than Jude Law, Schwarzenegger, in fact, Ethan Oak, he married the nanny. So she was not the queen, she didn't have the power. When the wife, when the first queen died, Marie-Thérèse, the first uh, queen, when she died, he didn't want to get married again. He said, I'm going to marry Madame de, Met de Maintenon because I, I love her. But it was, as we say in French, uh, you know, uh, in English too, morganatic wedding, meaning it's the queen, but she doesn't have the power of the queen. Mm -hmm. So it was a secret wedding. But can you believe it? That's why, you know, I say in my book, when I had children, my, my husband said, let's take a, a fille au père. I think it's the same in English. Yes, yeah, no yeah. pair girl. Mm. Yes, and I say no. I say no, Madame de Maintenon. He look at me weird and he said, what? Why do you say no, Madame de Maintenon? I say, you don't know what happened with Louis XIV and Madame de Maintenon? You know Madame de Maintenon? He said, yes, I know, of course I know her. She, she's from the Louis XIV court. But you don't know that he married the nanny, so you will fall in love with the nanny and you will, and you will tempt me. So no, I don't want for your pair. So ladies, what do you have to, to, to learn from Madame de Montespan? If you take a fille au pair, take a really ugly one. But even ugly, you know, when you see the nanny of Schwarzenegger, not Schwarzenegger, of the kids, sometimes it doesn't work. But I, I thought if Uma Thurman and um, Sienna Miller and Madame Schwarzenegger, if she had known French history, 
not an opera woman, never. Okay, so that now the, the the lesson of Madame de Montespan is be smart. Being beautiful is not enough. I say feed your brain as you feed as you you put the you moisturize your skin. You know, read books because it's feed your brain is as important as uh, moisturize your your skin. This is what I say. Uh, what else? Because the the Frenchmen, well, I guess older men. They like smart women. Alors, I see she was a cultural minister, Madame de Montespan. So you will maybe no, no won't recognize. So Racine is a theater playwright, very famous. Molière, very famous that we say the language of Molière and the, we say the French. English is language of Shakespeare. German is language of Goethe. Spanish is the language of Cervantes. And we say French is language of Molière. So Molière is the man with the, um, with the red uh, dress, you know? So we celebrate an uh, anniversary. So Molière, very important. So she knew them, they knew her very well, you know? She was receiving Molière, Racine, Lully, the musician, and um, Jean de La Fontaine in a, in a room, you know, as she was the, the, the queen. So she was really the smart woman uh, of the, the court. And La Sultane was a nickname and you see Versailles and really when you go in Versailles you have to remind Madame de Montespan because the golden age of Versailles when you had the water, the music, the hall of mirrors, it was exactly when she was with Louis XIV. After when he dumped her to go with the sad Madame de Maintenon, Versailles was less funny you know and less glorious while well, there was the wars but it really and I think this is what I said in my book. It's not a coincidence that when there was the brilliant Madame de Montespan, Paris, Versailles was the center of the Western world huh? because she was there to be the like like the queen, the queen of the party. Alors, the next one, I go fast. Josephine de Beauharnais. We should call her Josephine, uh, alors Rose de Beauharnais or Josephine Bonaparte. But Josephine de Beauharnais, it's a weird name because her last husband was not. Monsieur de Beauharnais, because she was a widow, but Monsieur Napoleon Bonaparte. I presume everybody knows huh? Napoleon Bonaparte. So, uh, alors Josephine, what can you, when, what can she teach us? She can teach us to be sweet, always, even when you don't want to be sweet and you want to shout. She, everything she did, Josephine, she did it in a very nice way. She really, and she had many, many obstacles you cannot imagine that uh, um, I did. In fact, if you're interested, I did a podcast with my Australian uh, friend. So I will give you the name if you want to hear it. It's 50, 20 minutes, you know, and I explain, I tell more about them in English if you're interested. But Josephine, she's very, she's, she's incredible because she was sweet. And with Napoleon, believe me, Napoleon was not a sweet man. Huh? So this is how she seduced him. This is how she was seducing everybody. She never shouted. She was extremely nice. And you know, she was doing something that's very useful. Uh, when you fight with someone, it happened to me, it happened to me a lot when you know somebody was not very nice with uh, him. Sometimes I have, I want to, you know, send text message or call and be aggressive. And in my mind, I say, don't do this. Do like Josephine, do like Josephine, what she was doing. Because believe me, many people were not nice with her, especially when Napoleon divorced with her, you know, she became, uh, people didn't care about her. She didn't talk to the people, you know, she say, okay, I move forward. I don't want to be, you know, to be bitter. And she didn't shout and she forget the people. And really, I think it's the best things to do in life, forget the bad people and move forward. She always did this. So she became Empress in 1804, which is uh, something uh, important. So this is the painting. If you go in, in Le Louvre or in Versailles, you have it's a huge painting of Napoleon and Josephine, you see. She became Empress, she had money and uh, she, she, she was, and she was still nice, you know, she always, she had a way to speak, always polite. She was polite with everybody. We say in, um, how do you say in English? Uh, a gentlewoman, you say this in English? You say gentleman for a man, but do you say gentlewoman if for a woman? No, you don't have this. This is word in English, yes. So she was like this. 
and always sweet. And I explained in my book when I had a fight with a boyfriend, I did what she did with Napoleon. I kept my dignity because she was really humiliated. You can imagine when Napoleon said, I'm going to dump you because you cannot have kids and I'm going to take a younger one, uh, Marie-Louise. Uh, she was humiliated in front of everybody. And everybody said she was, she kept her dignity. She was very beautiful. She was crying. But even when she was crying, she was beautiful. You know, she was a bit comedian. But important, even when you, you think you're humiliated, Think about Josephine, because what can be worse in life to be humiliated by Napoleon Bonaparte? Alors, Malmaison, it's the place where she lived when she divorced. I mean, divorced legally. Uh, sorry, I'm still a lawyer. It's not, it's, there were no divorce with Napoleon, because Napoleon didn't like women at all. Huh? Uh, we always learned when, uh, when we were lawyer in the French school, Napoleon Code is wonderful. It is wonderful, it's true, it's wonderful, Napoleon Code, that it, you have a, all the family law in South America is from the, is French, from the Napoleon Code, but when you're a woman, it's not wonderful at all, not at all. So it was a separation. Anyway, she was living in Malmaison. Alors Malmaison is not far from Paris, and I really advise you to go there. You can go by, uh, by bus from Paris, and it, they kept it as, you, you can hear her talking, Josephine. You have, of course, Napoleon everywhere, but you have Josephine because it's really Josephine who made it, huh? who made the Rue in Malmaison. Um, alors, the, the next one is Georges Sand. Alors, Georges Sand, she's not very well known by her books, but she's well known by her love life because she was a lover. I, I put you the name. Frédéric Chopin, the Polish uh, piano composer that I suppose you know, and uh, not Delacroix, but Musset, who is a very famous uh, poet. But Chopin is more well known. So when you read about Frédéric Chopin, you realize that he wrote most of his uh, masterpieces were written when he was with Georges Sand. Alors Georges Sand, she's well known in France because she was wearing trousers. And you have to realize that in 19th century, it's really not the golden age for women in France, wearing trousers was forbidden. You could go to be on custody. Jail, no, but on custody, yes. You had, you, you, you could wear trousers only for two things. If you were riding uh, horses or bicycle or for uh, medical reasons, so you had to go to the police station. And in my book, I say, ladies, next time you, you, you put your jeans, think about this. Can you imagine before putting your jeans, you go to the police station of your city with a paper and asking to the policeman, give me a paper to authorize me to wear trousers. Can you imagine? So uh, she was wearing trousers. She was smoking cigars. She had many lovers. She divorced, I mean, again, she couldn't divorce, but she, she's the first woman in France who had the separation. She was really how do you, a hit girl. And she even inspired uh, Charlotte Bronte. Sorry, my English is bad. Charlotte Bronte, Bronte, I don't know if you have a uh, pronounce well. Yes, you. So she was really the hit girl of Europe, Georges Sand. And she took a name of a man because she wrote books. She couldn't write books if she had a, a name of a woman because being a writer and being published as a writer, as a woman in 19th century in France was exactly the same if you were a public woman, a prostitute. So she wrote a first book in 1832 called Indiana, a huge success. And the journalist said it's the best seller of the year. And the man, a writer was very angry. You will guess who, it, who, who was the writer. He wrote the hunchback of uh, Notre Dame de Semur. It's Victor Hugo. He said, hey, you're nice, but me, I wrote a masterpiece. It's the hunchback of Notre Dame. So that's my book, which is the bestseller of the year, you know? Just to tell you that she, I wouldn't say she was more well-known, but she was as well-known as Victor Hugo because she wrote about how men treat women in France in the 19th century. She said, the honeymoon is not a honeymoon, it's a rape. 
because women don't choose the husbands, they know nothing about sexuality. So she said, it's a crime, you know? So many women bought a book. So Georges Sand is really a, a woman who say, the freedom, what is important is to be a free woman. The painting you have is Delacroix. Uh, he was a very good friend of Georges Sand. Delacroix is a classical, one of the best French painter from 19th century. He was the flag of the romantic painters. Unfortunately, the painting was cut and Chopin is uh, in Le Louvre, but Georges Sand, she's not in Le Louvre. Alors, she had an affair with Alfred de Musset. Alfred de Musset is a very famous romantic poet. And, you know, in my book, I say she always loved younger men. So one of the lessons of Georges Sand is free to love who you want. You don't care if the man is younger because she always loved younger men. Uh, seven years old, five years old, um, younger, sorry, five years younger, seven years younger. Imagine 19th century. Uh, she didn't care. She was doing really what she wanted. So in the chapter of Georges Sand, as I didn't love a man younger than me, I talk, I wrote about a friend of mine who reminds me Georges Sand. I had two friends who reminds me Georges Sand. One married a man really younger than her. So she explained me how French society, and you see, when you see the French president, he married a woman who is uh, 20 or 24 years older than he is. You can imagine how the French reacted, you know, not very well. So you think, oh, no, it's not a big deal. But I think it's always a problem when a woman loves a younger man. And it shouldn't be a problem because it's never a problem when it's the reverse. So Georges Sand, I think the, the lesson of Georges Sand is free to love who you want, something important. You don't care about what people say. Uh, alors, the last one is Sarah Bernhardt. So I know in English you say Bernhard, but in French we say Bernard because we don't pronounce the H. Sarah Bernard. So Sarah Bernard, it's really the lesson is assume who you are, even if you're not perfect. Because really, when you read about how she was, you're wondering how, she, how come she was so successful. She was skinny. When the woman, it was Belle Epoque, so 18, 1880 until uh, 1914, you know, the Belle Epoque is 1880 until the First World War. So she was skinny when the woman had to be curvaceous. She was red hair, you know, when women had to be blonde or but she didn't have the good color of hair. She was Jewish when uh, you had the Dreyfus affair, which was a very big, big affair with the uh, antisemitism and awful. And she assumed, she said, she, she felt Catholic herself, but she, she never denied she was also Jewish. She said, yes, I'm Jewish, I'm what? So she was a uh, single, she married, but late. She was a mother with a, a single mom. Can you imagine? And she was an actress. So she had all, you know, everything wrong to be, you know, the hit girl. And she became the hit girl because I think this is what she decided. She said, I will do what I want in life and I will assume who I am. And I think that in the world now, we pretend be unique, be yourself on Instagram. And I think it's exactly the reverse. I mean, you know, we use Photoshop to look younger. We want to be slimmer. We want to, you know, and my model was Sarah Bernard. I tell you why, because I started to be true guy that was not a spring chicken. I like this expression. I learned from an English man who told me, you're not a spring chicken. Uh, so I, I was not a spring chicken. And uh, so I was not, uh, I'm still not very young to be a guide, you know, and I was, there was many young women, fresh women, you know. And I remembered my English teacher, she was, half Australian, by the way, Patricia, that I really loved her. She was so great. She said, when you have uh, Anglo-Saxon uh, clients, you cannot smoke, you cannot smell the, the cigarette smoke. Well, me, I don't smoke, but just to say, you don't have to wear heavy perfumes and don't make joke about sex. Don't try to be very subtle because I'm a bit puritanical people. Uh, so this is the rules. Of course, I tell you this, but if you ask this, if you go to Paris and you have a tour guide and, he's, and you ask he or her, is it true? He will deny, no, not at all, not at all. No, of course, yes, this is the unwritten rule that we learned. 
so I remember I was, I have um, a good Russian girlfriend, uh, Alexandra, and she was laughing. She was laughing. So why do you laugh? She said with a Russian accent, oh, my pauvre, my pauvre, tu n'auras jamais de clients. She said, oh, my poor friend, you will have, you won't have any, any clients. You have to choose another job because it's true. I, you cannot smell my perfume, but my perfume is quite heavy. And when I do uh, make a lot of joke about sex, about nationality, and I have to tell hard problems with clients, they complain about me. So I thought, okay, I'm going to give up. I will go back to be lawyer because at least with lawyer, you know, it's square, it's like this, because uh, I cannot be a tour guide. You know, I like to be a bit uh, original, you know, artist, let's say so. And the agency say, no way, no way, you, it won't work. I was very depressed. And I thought about Georges Sand and I said, no, I don't care. I will assume who I am. If people don't like the way I am, I, well, too bad for them. So I won't tell you it was easy, but little by little I had clients, you know, uh, agency, people from agency who liked how I am. And fortunately smart clients who liked who I am. And I had the, you know, I didn't work with a, classical agency, let's say, but I work with agency who want guys who are a bit uh, more original and more, you know, authentic. So it worked, you know, it took me time, but it worked just to tell you uh, that it's important to stay as you are and not trying to really to look like a, a French woman, a Parisian woman or any woman, but to be, to stay as you are, because I think this is what uh, Jean Cocteau said, Alors, in English, um, the defect that people reproach you, it's your quality. So stay as you are. So here is Mucha. Mucha is a Art Nouveau, again, you know, the, um, he's from uh, Prague, Czechoslovakia. And he's a man who is doing, to, he's well known to do postures of Art Nouveau. And Sarah Bernard, who had a very good intuition in art, it's Sarah Bernard who discovered Mucha. Uh, he made many publicity for champagne, biscuits. So Art Nouveau is linked with women. So you have always women, you know, with the uh, lines and um, nature, this is the inspiration. So Sarah Bernard was the muse of Musha. So in all posters, you see Sarah Bernard everywhere. Even in publicity of champagne, it's Sarah Bernard. So she really liked him because it, she discovered him. But one day she said, Listen, uh, my little uh, Misha, I'm tired to see myself on champagne biscuits, so you fired. So she found somebody else to make the posters. Just to tell you that she stayed how she was and she became the muse of the most famous, one of the most famous Art Nouveau uh, posters, you know, makers, Misha, you know, so that's why, stay as you are. So Fetre, she was an actress, and I talk about this painting in my book. You know how she, I say, you and me, when you sit in the Sunday on your coach, you in pyjama, but Sarah Bernard, never. You see, even on a coach, she's very, she's an actress. She's really a diva. And I say in my book, in French and in English, stay or be a diva. This is important in life, just for yourself, you know, be a diva, a bit spoiled, you know, sometimes it's good, and treat yourself well. That's important. Um, so she was 30 years old when she was there and that's the end of my talk. And this is my, I have to show you my new book. So I don't know if this is the book in French. And so something weird, I cannot find my group on Facebook. It's La Vie Parisienne Facebook. So I put you the name of my, I'm on Facebook, Edith de Belleville Auteur. And I show you if I, maybe I can, that is the page of publicity. That's my book. Parisian life, Parisian life, adventure in the city of light, you see. I'm very emotional because it's the first time I show my book. Nobody saw it except my kids. So yes, so in Australia and in US and I'm very proud. So that's my book. Voila, I finished my talk. Thank you.